welcome to the Zooming Who's podcast. I'm your host, Dustin Dahusky. And I'm Kurt Antsarpus. And uh, today is uh, just an ordinary day, is, isn't it? Yeah, actually. It's just an ordinary day. Um, what, what are you doing for recreation today? Playing video games. Uh, my 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 rec my recreation is going to be uh, mixed drinks. Also, uh, Jameson, cold brew whiskey and coffee. Is that still the opened one, or is that a fresh this one? This is now? a fresh one. I just opened it today. Ah, I'm gonna have a whipped cream vodka, which actually kind of smells all right. And here, you want to smell? Sure. Hmm. Decent. Yeah, it smells it smells pretty decent. It's a small amount. And I've got a Red Bull Blue Edition. And I'm going to mix just a little bit of... Ooh. It hissed. Is is this can part cat? Yes. <gasps> Aww. <laughs> Um, today was crazy in terms of number of people to pick up. I picked up the most amount of people uh, for this whole transit program sort of thing. Which makes me feel good. Which also makes me feel like, wow, they're relying on me to get a lot done. But I think there are a lot of other people that are too slow to do their job. That I think they're relying more on me because they know that, whoa, this kid actually, like, moves fast. But that's just me, though. Uh -huh. um, today I've been thinking a lot about high school and about how much it kind of sucked in a lot of aspects. Oh, yeah. But then I began to think back on some of the stuff I actually enjoyed more about high school the more I got older. The stuff I kind of miss overall, because you never really will get this feeling ever again. What do you miss? Um, just, well, I mean, you still hang out with your friends anyway, but hanging out when you're young, not a care in the world, the whole world is just kind of barely open right in front of you, but screwing around uh, during study hall. When you had a study hall, it was off enough in the library. Oh, yeah. We had the most amount of fun trying to make each other laugh without being noticed and yeah. being yelled at by the librarian. That is the best kind of fun that I miss. Um, just, uh, just classic stuff. I remember... Uh, <laughs> I was a weird kid... In uh, in high school, I uh, I mean, you did things growing up that's like incredible. How <laughs> we're not gonna discuss too much in, into it, but it's just it makes me laugh. It's like, hey, who did that? It wasn't me. No, yeah, it was. It was me. What crazy things are you talking about? Uh-oh. That was during the recording. That Those were two updates. Is that going to interfere with shit? I mean, it's probably in the podcast anyway, so we'll let it happen. Oh. Eh. I don't know. Well, you know what? Fuck it. We'll just, just keep going. Go I... Them. Just, How just, just keep going. Okay. So, um... I mean, we can talk about a, a bit of technology. I'm disappointed with this computer because now it took so long. Actually, it didn't take very long. F well, actually, no. You know what? No. Because I've been on a video kick lately on making podcasts and whatnot. It takes up a lot of space. I didn't realize that, and it clogged my computer a bit. Um, but, um, I don't know. I think my old computer handled things better because it wasn't a bitch but I don't know I I, uh, I don't think it's the computer I think it's the operating system Windows 10 is is a piece of crap yeah it is garbage and everybody knows it anyway 
So going back to nostalgia. What uh, what crazy things did I do that you were just talking about? Uh, stuff that you did with your friends. Yes. I'm not going to describe it <laughs> unless. I don't care. Talk. You want me to, to discuss? Yeah. <laughs> say it. I, I know exactly what you're going to say. When when Poos was a young Poos. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't want to stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> he would load his pants. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. I did load my pants. Granted, we're not talking about me like last week. We're talking about you know a, a very young kid, a very four or five year old poos. Yep. And <laughs> your friends would say, "Man, who farted? It's a rock. <laughs> Man, that's still around here. I don't know who who that is." <laughs> and then your dad saying, "Son." have to have this conversation. You have to make it to the pot. <laughs> you have to make it to the bathroom. <laughs> we can't do this anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God and, bless that man. And knowing knowing how Fred would probably say it, I can envision it. It's perfect. He was the most patient father. He put up with every bit of my shenanigans. And every bit of your shit, too. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. And we've stooped down to shit already. Yeah. Actually, it didn't take too long. Nope. So, nostalgia. Yeah. Gym class. Yes? I like Jim. I hated Jim. Aw. Why did you like Jim? Because... Well, maybe not all the kids in my grade didn't all see eye to eye, but it was one one way of like building some form of com camaraderie that didn't exist anywhere else in the school. Well, at least when you're playing sports, all that all that social bullshit literally was left in the locker, and you just had fun. It was literally to have fun and be competitive, but. Again, fun. And uh, it's that kind of thing that I do miss, is that even some of the kids in my grid that I absolutely just did not care about, at least to play pickleball with them was different and unique. I don't know. To me, lately, I've been thinking about high school and middle school, and while, yeah... There's a lot that I don't care about it, but there's a few things that I miss about special feelings that only come across once in your life or at a certain time in, in your life that you will never feel the same way like it again. Like the very first morning where you're driving yourself to school. Yeah. It's like, I, I can't believe I'm allowed to do this. Yep. Yeah. Is, is anyone going to stop me? Uh, should I stop myself and say, hmm, what about all my friends on the bus? Did, and you, then, did you miss riding on the bus after that? I felt like there were some things about the bus I did kind of miss, and then a lot's more like, you, you know what, I got stuff that I'd rather do. While I did my homework on the bus, at least when I got home, I got home quicker that I can do my homework faster. So really, as far as getting homework done, didn't really do a whole lot much different. Um, just talking with friends af after a long day of school. Here's something, too, I just thought about. How about respect for the person that drove you guys to school every day? The bus driver? Yeah. Oh, yeah. After going through what you go through now. Oh, yeah. I just I was just thinking about that, too. Did you ever hear from them? Did you ever hear from the driver? Did they ever say, 
uh, tell kids to like settle down or stop talking. Or... Sit on your asses. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He or she? Both. Both? No. And a lot of them were like people in their 70s and 80s. Older. I can't believe that man yelled at us and I thought he could have a heart, he could have a heart attack while driving a bus. And yet he never did. He seemed like an okay man, but boy, when you piss him off, holy shit, did he you get knew. pissed off. You knew. This is more like, like, back in the day when you rode the bus, the bus driver yelling at kids was, was deemed to be a good thing for society. Nowadays... Can't. Videos of bus drivers yelling at kids is going to be seen in a negative light because you know what? Sometimes kids just need to get yelled at. Yeah. Whether if you liked it or not, whether if you deserved it or not, that's just something you got to deal with in, in life. Yep. Is that someone is going to yell at you for a random reason and you're just going to have to go along with it. Life lessons. Yep. We still learn them every day. <laughs> but yeah. The feeling of driving yourself to school for the very first time. And since you were so nervous, you were the first one to get to school. Yeah. Like, even barely some of the faculty actually made it to the school at, at the time you made it to school. So and, for me... <laughs> um... <laughs> I don't know if you call it a good memory. It's definitely laughable now. So you mentioned earlier about me. Uh, what did you call it? Loading your pants. Loading my pants. Which we didn't go into great detail there. I don't know if we should leave the detail out. We should probably leave the detail out. I mean, it's, it's enough that I'm talking about it on a podcast. It's your pants. <laughs> <laughs> In high school, freshman year, I pissed myself. Oh, no. <laughs> wait, wait, what? I couldn't make it to the bathroom in time. The teacher wouldn't let me leave. So this is not my fault. I pissed myself, like literally urinated in my pants. Went down my leg. I, went I got to the, a story. I went to the bathroom. <laughs> I used soap and water. Of course, it didn't wash the stain out completely because they were like corduroy pants. Oh, no. So they just like absorbed. They were like, mmm, urine. <laughs> so I kept going to the bathroom. All... Piss pants. <laughs> I, kept going, I, kept going to the ba I kept going to the bathroom periodically to re-wet my pants just so it looked like I, I, I splashed splash water on myself. Because like you were like, oh, I, yeah, I was washing my hands like yeah, an I ass. Just, I was like, uh, what? And then I remember this one black girl saying, Did you piss yourself? And I was like, no, I just washed my... <laughs> I feel like the guy from the SNL skit with the, Did you shit in these lamps? No, in the, not in these lamps. Hey, Johnson, you you, you got to come, come take a look at this. Oh, damn! I love how he says, No, I didn't shit in these lamps. Like... That just makes it sound like he may have shit in other places, <laughs> in other lamps. He may have shit in, in, in other places. But, but not, not in these lamps. No, no. But yeah, I, I, I remember she you saying... You piss yourself? <laughs> this boy pissed himself. I'm like, no, no. I was just washing my hands a lot. And I splashed myself. And she's like, why didn't it dry? Mm. <laughs> You couldn't fight that, though. No. Nope. Um, I also, too, accidentally pissed myself. However, uh -huh. I was at the urinal. This was like in like in junior or in senior year, so it was like my star moment. Except I asked during in the middle of class, Hey, can I use the restroom? Oh, sure. Normally in my school, they give you about 10 minutes. Anything longer than 10 minutes is... They're going to come find you. Yeah, oh yeah. And actually, a lot of the kids would say, oh yeah, he's, he's masturbating in the bathroom. Which uh, is, even the girls would say, oh yeah, he's, he's fiddling with himself. 
Um, and uh, I just needed a beat. That's it. And you know what's the worst thing about this? What? You know how you would like to, like, take your time walking to the bathroom just to, just to get out of class? Yep. This time, the bathroom was right across the door from the class I asked to use the bathroom in. Or I wanted to use the bathroom for. Yep. The bathroom was literally right across the hall from the door of the classroom. So literally, it was like, you know what? It was just the basic human need to just, yeah, you need to go. Okay. And uh, I go in the men's room. I uh, unzip my pants. And uh, I pull out my red rocket. And then I just go, right? Uh -huh. That's a lot of detail. I didn't actually realize that I actually didn't pull it out all the way. Oh, shit. And uh, it actually dribbled down my, my pant leg. Oh, God. So, I was already halfway because I was looking up. And then I realized, oh, fuck. And then I started worrying. And this is only two minutes in because it's literally, literally like five seconds to walk across the hallway. That's how close this bathroom was. So I had like all of nearly 10 minutes to do what I needed to do. And I didn't know what to exactly do. So I used paper towel. I was only doing this, like like blotting out my, my leg and I was wearing uh, dark jeans, but look at the darker blue patch. Um. I was literally air humping a uh, hand dryer, hand, hand dryer yeah. yep. that was literally like three and a half feet off the ground. So I was literally thrusting myself into it <laughs> just to actually get the, the dry on it. And you know what? It didn't work. Um, I used as much toilet paper. I used as much hand towel as I could to blot it out. Um... Then I knew 10 minutes was, was coming up. And this is in the middle of class, which uh, which uh, a high school class is about 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. I literally asked, like, like, literally within, like, the first 15, 20 minutes. So, not to say that I, I, I could have waited out until the very end. Because at that point, a lot of teachers would say, well, why don't you go after, after, after class? Right. Did you, uh, what class was this? Do you remember? This was history class. Mm, probably your favorite subject. Oh, yeah. And, um, 10 minutes was up. And I knew I had to come back to the class. It's like, you, you know what? Um, maybe if I did exactly the same thing you did as far as, like, wetting up my, my pants a bit, because, like, Oh yeah, I'm 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 gonna wash my hands like an asshole because uh, I'm gonna share like I don't care and it's all over my shirt and my pants. Yep. And everyone does not think too much about that. However, this was literally my whole thigh, like the whole inner thigh. Yep. And I knew, oh fuck, I have to be brave about this. <laughs> I decided to walk into the classroom. Walked in the door frame because it was the door was open, so you didn't even have the courtesy of to opening the door of your own fate. The door it was, was already open. open. Yeah. And um, first thing I did while walking through the door frame, I looked at my pants <laughs> just to see how bad it was. Pants were totally dry. Pants were totally dry. And I was like, oh, fuck, I pulled this off. You lucky bitch. <laughs> and no one knew any different until now. But, yeah. Oh, you my God. Out. You lucked out because I got unlucky. And you know what? I was going to be brave about, okay, I'm going to have to, I'm, I'm going to have to do this. You have to bite the bullet. <sighs> and no one really liked me in school anyway, so it's like, yeah, I'm, Fuck it. I may as well just drop a step lower. Nope. Nope. Pants totally dried. Pants totally dried. Like as if nothing happened. Oh, I got lucky there. You got really lucky. That was... 
Someone was looking out for you there. The pants god. Yep. The pants god was looking after me. Le pou et le pis. Le pis gods. The, oh my god. Oh, that's bad. Um, good memories. The only good memory I have from school was uh, I didn't like gym so much. But I did like cross country because I had a crush on a few of the runners that were in classes higher than me. So that inspired me to run. Because and run after their asses. Yep. Uh, and I also enjoyed uh, when we would do musicals. Aww. Were, um, were you in any ex extra group? curricular activities because there's one regret from high school that I wish I could have done like sports wise I, I mean I did 10 10 years of city soccer yeah, you did soccer yep however it was not through the school okay. however I've done enough years of soccer that I thought you know what I don't need to do it at the school uh, so for, as far as sports was concerned it didn't bother me right but as far as like did I pick up an instrument did I get an, did I go into theater or drama or um, some other kind of uh, after-school act activity that people got really en engrossed with? Yeah. And I really didn't do anything until my senior year. And the school that I went to was both a middle and high school. That's six years. Yeah. For the first five years, I did nothing. Uh -huh. But really, I, and I made reasoning of, you know, this is my last year of high school ever. I don't want to say like I've never done anything at all and be a total square. So I joined the Gay Straight Alliance, um, part of an anti-bullying campaign at school, which I wasn't the instrumental person to actually begin it, but I was kind of the nucleus uh, just to like, yeah, we do have a bit of a bullying problem at, at school, but what do we do about it? And then people got together and say, okay, well, we found a way. And they had me involved and whatnot. Well, that's nice that you did that. I wish we had had something like that in my school. Um, now, going from nostalgia, maybe that's something we can talk about. <laughs> High school bullies and what they did. And now this is between two kind of generations. <sighs> From the 80s, Poos. So now you're dredging up the worst memories for me for high school. Oh, wait. Were there actually a lot? Well, just one that that, that basically lingered with me the entire four years of high school. What happened? I don't even want to bring... I don't even want to, like, say it out loud, honestly. Oh, it's that bad? Aww. It wasn't fun. And that's partially why I never wanted to go to my reunions. Fair enough. Plus, I look at me now, and I look at them now, and I'm like, they're fat and ugly and married with kids, and I'm still... Beautiful poos. And young. So Forever fuck, young poos. So fuck them. They all wanted to be friends with me on Facebook years after. Years oh, after. so in order to feel like closure for them to forgive themselves of whatever they've done... Uh -huh. They feel like a friend, like a Facebook request is going to like help smoothen things and out. And I made really, I mean, I made friends with, I rekindled friendships with a few people. Makiba Jones, who I truly love, she, she was a good person. Aww. She was never mean to me in high school. She was always nice to me. Julie Pettit, who was nice to me for the most part. We had some good experiences in driver's ed together. Aww. Um, Did you run over many things? I ran over nothing, which is what was so funny. Aww. Did she there run was, over something? No, but there was a pigeon in the road, and I couldn't speed up, and he wouldn't fly. And for some reason, I kept pushing like down what I thought on was the gas pedal, but it was really the brake. <laughs> <laughs> so I stopped for a pigeon. Because <laughs> he wouldn't move. Stupid pigeon! And he wouldn't fly. <laughs> but um, uh, somebody else that I never really was friends with, but knew of 
we had fun in the lunchroom together. Uh, Jennifer Thorne, uh, she would always belch really loud, and then I would always belch really loud. <laughs> Uh, and we, we like much later, and I'd say like four or five years ago, rekindled the friendship for a while until Trump. Oh, and then you discovered that she was a Trumper. Yeah. Oh. It ruined that friendship for me. We could not have a civilized conversation. Af afterwards, huh? Yeah. Every time. Because I would... See something that, that was funny. Uh, what was it? There was it was a Sesame Street thing, and Trump was on Sesame Street. No, wait, 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 wait. As a puppet or as or yeah, as a I Muppet can't remember or? if it was a Muppet or if he was on there himself. I think it was him as a Muppet. Cause they were making fun of him. And it was truly hilarious. Oh, I bet. And she took so much offense to it, and I thought, "Gee, you are a president. How can all, you, how, how can you miss cheetah like that?" First of all, this was made in the '80s or late '80s, early '90s. There was even rumors back then of yeah. him wanting to run for president, and it was all a joke. It was like, "Oh," yeah. and then he's Trump... always been the butt of our jokes for yeah. a long time. And he enjoyed it too. Yeah, it was just a way to get his, you know, to become a household name. Very much like the Hiltons, uh, famous f for being nothing but famous, not for doing anything. Anyway, so, yeah, because of him and, and politics in general, uh, we stopped talking after a while because she got mad at me. I called her butt hurt one time, and that really pissed her off. So what would be saying, anus swelling? Doesn't matter. The point is, uh, because of politics, my friendship was ruined. Because I was really enjoying re reconnecting with her. Oh well. Uh, but, yeah, these people, they're not anybody I want to... Now, especially, I don't talk to any of them. Our class president tries to message me all the time, and I'm just like, no, I'm not interested. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel the same way. And you have a reunion coming up. What, me? Yeah. Oh, ten years next year. Yeah. Oh, shit. Are you going to go? Should I? <laughs> That's a question that you have to answer. Is there anybody that you would enjoy seeing and reconnecting with? Uh, honestly, the only one I would just rather do it outside of anything being just do it in the real world as it is. It would be the real world. Yeah. Frankly, I don't think it's that important. It's up to you. There was a lot of the cliques, the tight friendships that people, they had stayed friends way beyond school. That wasn't me. I didn't stay friends with anybody. I mean, I, I stayed friends with one of them for a very, very long time. Then we kind of, uh, you know... Had a falling out. I, I had a bit of a falling out just because he was doing his own thing and I was doing, doing my own. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he had joined the military after graduate. Well, actually, he joined the military uh, during se senior year, but he had to finish senior year, become 18 before he, he can officially... Serve. Uh, serve. Yeah. Uh, but he was technically, you know, did all the paperwork, whatnot, uh, you know, getting his all his abs, abves, ab, abs does. Uh, I, f I forget what their tests are, are called. He pretty much did them all. And um, so he was very committed about doing that. And I think he did about one tour of duty. Um. And I think by about 2014, 2015, we just kind of like, uh, we split ways, although anytime that I do make a mention on Facebook about whatever he would like, you know, like my post or what whatnot. Mm -hmm. So it's so it's not to say that we hate each other in any way, that, no. some, that something happened. The feeling is mutual. Uh, we're still friends, but, you know, we're sailing ships passing in the middle of the night. I get it. And we only do a foghorn. 
to say, hey, how's it going? Um, beyond that, if I really wanted to hang out with them, I'd rather do it just on a regular basis instead of at a high school reunion, which kind of seems too fake. Because at that point, oh, you're forcing is. yourself. It is. It, the whole thing is one big facade. Actually, you know what? I think. And you be... know what it is, too? What? It is a, uh, a bra bragging rights event. Yeah. To see, to, for people to come back and say, oh, I've done this and I've done that and I have right. this many kids and I have this many wives and... You make this I've, this much money at this company. And I've sucked this company. many dicks and I've fucked that many assholes. I should, I should just come in in fursuit and uh, there would be so many people not showing up anyway. So it'd be interesting to know who's, who would actually would guess it would actually be me and I doubt anyone would except for one other fur and that is uh, Ivory Deer who we graduated the same class and I didn't I, I accidentally well actually no I'm not gonna say it's in an accidental thing because we were at the same convention at the same time I just didn't expect him to be a furry yeah. um, and we kinda got close a bit af afterwards we were never close in high school, and then all of a sudden, I discovered that he was a furry, and we got to know a bit of more about e each other and this and that. Still, more like a, more like acquaintances, but a lot more friendly or a lot more cordial than we were in high school. Which, yeah. not like we were assholes to each other. We just passed each other on on the hallway. Um, we had our own cliques in high school, and just they often enough never merged. Um, as far as like bullying is concerned that I can remember, people just key scratching the hell out of my car. Um, any, any time that someone had a joke about my car, of like how crappy it looks and this and that, it's like, okay, um, your folks bought you your car. I doubt you could afford a ten, twelve thousand dollar used pickup truck from like even what could have been probably even eight years ago. Which, when you really think about it, um, they were using a vehicle that was uh, newer than ten years old. My car was reaching twenty years old in high school. And uh, people were driving uh, Cadillacs. And I'm not talking about old, old Cadillacs, like one that, like, if you were a high schooler, you would pay someone about a grand or, or so to buy the most um, f most feral Cadillac with, like, you know, condoms littered everywhere and unknown mold growing in the back seat and rust and nothing works and whatnot. No, these are actually relatively newer cars that their folks definitely bought them. There was no way that, that they would have bought them unless they put a loan on their name and they have to work. Although some of them did work, actually. so They, they probably bought them, but it's like, dude, you bought yourself an Audi. While this is a nice car for you now, I hate to be the one who has to fix it well, not the one who has to fix it, the one who has to pay for repairs when something does go wrong with them. I don't know, but... Um, jamming locks in our lockers. Uh, the, the lockers had a recess for the actual lock itself. They weren't the uh, fixed dial lock on the actual door itself. It was a literal, not, I guess it was like a padlock, but it was a rotary dial lock. And the recess in the door was in a dimension that if you were to literally jam the lock up upward into the recess, you would actually jam the door from ever op opening until you used your heel on a, like a downward karate chop to like kick it down. We did a lot of that to each other. Um, I don't know, it's just... 
we were all somehow assholes to each other. I don't know why. And the great above us was normal. The great below us was pretty normal. We were just kind of assholes to each other. But then as like the last two years of high school went through, we kind of mellowed out. But there was still some grudges going on, like, oh, God. People pantsing people, of course, you, 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 get, your, uh, you uh, get your rumor and such like that. So, I mean, pretty typical thing for, like, high school stuff and whatnot. That's the one thing I did not like about the middle school and the high school. And then suddenly in senior year, we all kind of like grew up. I stopped giving a fuck after a while. It's like, you know what? Fuck it. Um, this, is, this is my last year. I'm going to enjoy it my way and fuck everything else. I'm not going to care. And I think a lot of people says, oh, well, this is kind of stupid. I look like a fool now. You know what? I'm not going to do anything stupid because uh, I've already made myself look like an asshole. So really, a lot of us kind of grew out of that phase in our final year. It's just it took them, us all to really get to that point. You um, reminded me of something else that I forgot. Uh-oh. <clears throat> I already talked about this. One time, but I'll, I can bring it up again. Uh oh. Nun boobs. Nun boobs. Yeah. There was a nun that was our advanced English teacher. Uh oh. She was very un unorthodox to say the least. Okay. Uh, she rode uh, our star quarterback as horse to convey uh, who's the guy that rides through the town warning the townspeople Paul Revere yeah she's trying to reenact Paul Revere she was Paul Revere George Monaco was the horse <laughs> <laughs> there was that uh, faux pas I learned I... faux pas from her Aww. but, but I was going to say a twink and then ran, uh, rode on that horse. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, that's bad. Uh, she, had, she, she taught me and Julie about social faux pas. Because we always got to class early because we were we came from just like two doors down, two classrooms right. down. Uh, and there was like a 15-minute period between, or 15-minute break between classes to get from one class to another. Right? Really? Because it was a big old school. Uh, we only had like five minutes. That's yeah. why classes were only... Maybe it wasn't 15. Maybe it was 10 minutes. We had 55-minute classes. It took us five minutes to then run around the school. But Ours were like 45-minute classes. Oh, like okay. 10 minutes in between classes. Okay. Anyway, uh, sorry. Sorry, Xander. Anyway. Anyway. And then I'm going to take a sip. Uh, yeah, she taught us about social faux pas. Because Julie would, me and Julie would get there early. And Julie was checking her mirror to see if, like, how she looked for some reason. Because mm -hmm. that's what girls do in high school. And Emily, Sister Emily said, Julie. That's a faux pas. And I remember Julie's reaction, which is like, a faux what? She's like, a faux pas. A lady doesn't check her mirror in public. She goes to the restroom to do that. That's true, yeah. Yeah. So we learned that. And then um, Sister Emily, uh, I found out much later. In fact, it clicked way later in my life that she had a crush on me. Yeah. I apparently have this effect on older women. I've had it for a long time. You are a cat and you attract cougars. I do. This is such a cat thing. God, damn damn me to hell. You man. you are just small, short haired, domestic poos, and you're like a attracting all of the wild cougars. So that, that she asked me to help her move books. 
the storage room that she had, which is way down the new wing. So, of course, you know, me being the good guy that I am, I'm like, of course, Sister Emily, I would be, I would be happy to help you. Aww. She had all these piles of books, like probably four, four, four and a half feet high. Mm -hmm. And she would say, that stack, I want to be moved over to this corner. This stack, I want to be moved over with these books. After the th second stack, I bent over to pick them up, and I came back up, moved them. By the third stack, I bent over, picked them up, and I came up into boobs. Sagging, dangling, boobs. None boobs. Were they flat, or were they just... They were sagging. Oh, so they she were like was, free moving. She was standing over me. And then you just, just went up and like, boo. <laughs> <laughs> you literally did a, uh, 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 the, uh, the balls. Yeah. The uh, swinging balls. Yeah. Um, what are they called? They're, um, you would... Pendulum, like a pendulum? Yes, the uh, pendulum balls. So then when you, like, put your head up. I was the, you just said like like the boobs like like go the, like like away from them. I was the center your... ball. It doesn't move while the two boobs. <laughs> yeah, uh, I left right away after that. I got the hell out of there. It was boobs ablaze. <laughs> immediately, I was like, I went and told the first person I saw, like I just moved some books and Sister Emily touched me with her boobs. <laughs> they were like, what? Sister Emily just touched me with her boobs. I went and I told my uncle, who was the principal at the time. <laughs> He's like, Joe, I'm sorry that happened to you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's such an innocent kid thing to say. Too. Yeah. Nowadays, it, it could be taken so wrong, but back then it's uh, like, huh, that kid just hit himself in the head with well, boobs. I heard much later, in fact, Julie's husband now, uh, who was like two years lower than us mm -hmm. they had her and he said that she shit herself in the classroom oh no yeah in front of the whole class how the hell happened there she was old oh she was old, she was old. She i was... didn't i didn't realize she was old that's why i said sagging boobs i was, was... I was gonna say if no, she, she was, she was that not young. young oh okay she was not young she was too old to be even teaching at that at that point like <laughs> i probably should have painted a clearer picture of who she was liver spots <laughs> yes so uh, the tits when she when she went to write on the chalkboard this is how her hand was but as oh, soon okay. as that chalk hit the keyboard or the keyboard as soon as that chalk hit the chalkboard it's sort perfect of... penmanship really like you wouldn't believe that came out of that woman but yeah she was probably in her 70s so then boobs, she would tuck in her shirt and then her boobs in yeah, her exact. shirt. Yeah, exactly. They just dangle. Aww. So that's, yeah, I got... I, you got touched I by, by pancake by old, sag boobs. Old, flat, saggy boobs. <laughs> yep. Let's see. Uh, speaking of, like, moving school books... So for many, many years, I've helped my mom in the summertime at around, actually twice, uh, twice every summer for the longest time, I would help volunteer with my mom to not only do uh, the, the book return, mm -hmm. We're literally an entire high school, which Nathan Hale High School is an incredibly huge school. Yes, it is. I think it's like, tw it's, it's 2,500 kids from freshman to senior. I think they're like 400, 500 um, group classes or like graduation classes or something like that. Um, and the one thing as just being a younger Hoosk and not so much different from the books that I had, um, in school, 
kind of reminded me of, oh yeah, these, these are high school textbooks. I learned a lot from them. And you know what? In, in college, these are a lot more... Um, they're a lot more better book, although in high school they were simple that you could learn just practically about anything. Yeah. Um, it was it was meant to be simple enough to not totally frustrate you, but it also frustrates you. But it was not to convey that it was impossible to learn unless you really didn't care to read the book. But stacking books, you know, eyeballs high and whatnot, and um, just. The feeling of these books, putting them aside, making a stack on pallets that would weigh a couple tons each, just because there's that many books, yeah. um, just kind of re reminded me of my time in middle and high school. Of oh yeah, I I gotta go to uh, I gotta go to orientation day to grab my books so that way uh, when the school year is set that I'm set to go and such. Um, I don't know. It's just, just I've I've helped around with schools for so long. It, uh, it's just, it gives me an never really a negative memory at that point because one, I never went to that school and I just enjoy helping. But it always happens to be with a school. Mm -hmm. um, but it was always fun at the end of the day because it's like you know what, I'm in a high school. I'm in a library. Just kind of reminds me of my high school library. Being a library in general, I don't know. I'm I'm a total book nerd. I don't uh -huh. know. I I feel like that only really applies to me at that point where I would feel the way that I felt. But I don't know. Um, just it's fun to be slugging around hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of books from each grade. And touching them, and then realizing some of them seen some shit. Like, seen some shit. And some of them look totally like shit, too. Like, they, they look like... They've been through shit. They've looked like they've been wiped between two butt cheeks. Yeah. yeah, they were sticky, and I had to wash my hands. Ugh. So, I don't know, it's just, lately, I've been on a nostalgia kick with schools, and younger high school husk. Yep. And while a lot of it sucked, because I, I, I can tell you this, uh, high school is not meant to be perfect. No. It's, uh, it's definitely uh, an introduction to real life. With, without a care in the world in the actual world, but in school, it gives you a good picture of what it's going to be like. And some of the people that you meet in high school are very much going to be the same people you will likely meet in the real world. Because you know why? Some people literally don't change. And some people don't grow up. No. It's fun when you grow up, you grow old, but you never really truly grow up. You are always going to be whatever fun individual you are, uh... Some aspects of you will not grow old because you enjoy doing things. It's much like furry. Uh, it's it's something I can never genuinely grow out of because I enjoy it so much that I just can't see that ever being a possibility, ever being a practicality. It's just, to me, I'm totally one with it. Um, but in the sense that you're going to meet people who were assholes in high school, yep. who are assholes in the real world, and not much has changed besides they get a job and now they get power to literally put their thumb on anyone. Yep. Uh, I think that's pretty much my boss. And for many years I've, I've thought, was my boss the bully or was he the bullier? And I actually can't tell because e either one would make sense. It's yeah, it's hard to tell. So, was he made did, fun of a lot, or did he made fun of somebody people? Somebody probably bullied him to, to the point where he became a bully himself. That that's, too. That's generally how it works. And you know what? A lot of bullies, even though some of them just don't change, a lot of them just turn out to be normal and end up actually doing good, even if they can't fix what they've done in the past. They tend to correct their ways into their future. 
It's actually it's an interesting concept. Yep. I don't know. It, it's just for some reason it's 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 hit a nostalgic chord with me. Just gym class, just being with your friends, doing stupid things, even stupid things out of out of school, after school, really. Um, I would have this bromance with my friend RJ. Um, who he and I would then go to, you know, bowl nights and whatnot on almost a weekly basis. So much so that uh, it was literally crippling us both that we were going to see movies almost every other night. Um, going going bowling every other night. Well, it was so much fun. Oh, boy. Um, does it cost money? But you know what? It was that kind of stuff that was actually kind of fun. It just reminds me of youth. It reminds me of, you know, this this fun can keep continuing and on and on and on and on. And not realizing that <laughs> finances and eventually you figure out life on your own in your own way of how that all works. Uh, you do your own thing. Yep. Granted... I'm sure if me and RJ were to talk about those days, it'd be like almost no time has passed. But, yeah. Well, don't let my experiences and, and uh, what I say, uh, you know, uh, make you, you should make your own decision on whether you actually want to go to this reunion or not. You may enjoy it. Who knows? I'm, I, I probably might actually maybe go to one just to see how it goes. And if yeah. it's just as I think you should. I will honestly say I kind of regret it. This is why, though. And this is what I actually was going to say earlier. Uh, people thought they knew me. In what way? Like they thought they knew who I was. So much so that someone else that I knew said they were me. And went to parties and said, I'm Joe Winters. Uh, and this person was flamboyant, doing drag. So people thought I was a drag queen. Not that I have any problems. You had an imposter. I had an imposter that wow. wore makeup. And Did appeared, you look anything like you? I don't, I don't even know because <laughs> I don't know this person. I think they had a, a secret crush on me. Sounds like it, because you would never go that far with Because someone. they, I'm not adverse. I love drag queens. I, I watch RuPaul's Drag Race all the time. Uh, you know this. You I used to work with Ru, RuPaul I back in the day. did used to work with RuPaul Charles back in the day. One of my many claims to fame. Johnny Depp, RuPaul, others. And others. Gwyneth Paltrow. In every single historical photo, you will see always a loaf in the background. That's right, that's me. Always in the background, never the foreground, but always in the background in a grainy photo. There is going to be a loaf on a box somewhere. Well, shout out to Johnny, Johnny Depp, by the way. That guy is getting a bad rap now. He should have stayed out of the tabloids like he did like five, ten years ago. He was never in the tabloids. He lived like on an island somewhere. I think he got bored uh, he, he, being he sequestered got bored. and cut off from the world. He he got bored being detached. Yeah. You Which there is such a thing. You can't live like that away from all living society. But right. he was I still think he's a good person. He was cool to me, so shout out to Johnny Depp. Here's to you, Johnny. Anyway, uh so yeah, this imposter said they were me, or either said they were me, or said they knew me. Mm -hmm. So people thought I was a drag queen. And then they would see me years later, and Kevin Trudeau's like, Hey, I, I, I heard you were, were doing drag. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Actually, I haven't tried doing drag yet. <laughs> I never even got to do drag, because... The other drag queen that I knew, that knew my friend Jeff Smith, that knew RuPaul Charles, mm -hmm. 
saw me as a threat because I was too pretty out of drag. So I almost guaranteed that this in makeup... You'd be drag poos. I would be drag poos. I would be way too beautiful. Uh, I probably should still try drag. Who knows? Well, stay tuned. But yeah, back then I was being... I won't say the word accused because that makes it sound like it's a bad thing. Right. I was being mislabeled as someone I wasn't at that time. That was one of many things. Some, somebody else said that they, they heard I did something else. I'm like, where are you guys getting You had getting a reputation these? without doing anything. I did. I'm like, this is not who I am. You don't even know. And usually that is a reason. No, uh, you, you have a reputation My for reputation. doing absolutely nothing. Which means they either liked you that much or they saw you as a threat to do something. I think they were just infatuated with, with what is Joe up to? It's like Toons is the driving cat. So what's Toons is up, up to? Uh, and Toons you... is still driving off cliffs. Uh -huh. That's what Toons is up and to. And then Kurt Ann is always loafing in a box. That's In drag. In, in, in drag, he is wearing a tiara. Wow, so someone's, so someone likes, well, then, then again, <laughs> so, oh, actually at, at that point, now, now here's a segue, um, remember, uh, remember a time when I had imposters? Mm-hmm. Okay. And oddly enough, this was like a whole organized group, and a lot of them were from Texas. There were five dozen de Huskies impersonating me in Texas. They, uh, a lot of them had my more recent art. Obviously, none of the stuff that had archived that has never seen the light of day, but a lot of the stuff that had posted online, they had art of. Their, their bios were the same as mine, and they were trying to convince people that they were... Um, the real Dustin. Right, and they even mentioned about, you know, oh, yeah, and they talked, they were all talking about, oh, and Curtin's doing fine, oh, yeah, he's, he, he's a cat and whatnot. This is why, this is why we were dating? Oh, yeah, this is, uh, this is 2016. Wow. And uh, suddenly one of them actually came up to me and says, hey, so how long have you been a Dustin? And I said, 2002 and that's when they realized oh fuck he's he's the actual the yeah and then immediately it all fell through mm -hmm. and I had so many people come to me from Wisconsin and from Texas oh my god you're leaving for Texas I didn't know and then people from Texas are like oh my god you're moving to Texas why um it was just really, really confusing. That's bizarre. Um, and they were all trying to pretend to be like me. Even I saw some of the messages from some of these people that are like, I would say sort of convincing that, yeah, they knew my mannerisms. But when they were trying to uh, fool my actual friends, they were like, uh, this is all wrong. Uh like one of the Dustins doesn't know punctuation. Yeah. You know me. I am a I am a husk that likes his punctuation in yeah. his sentences. When they realized Dustin is the only husk on, on in this fandom that will continue to use punctuation regardless of well reason. And this person didn't use a single comma, a single period, whatever. They were missing all the details. They were missing all the small details that they wouldn't know, or never really to think close enough of. And other friends were like, um, when did he stop using periods and commas? So that was one thing that set them off. Um, people again asked me, I didn't know you were moving to Texas, and like, or you are in, in Texas, because I had some friends to say hey we should hang out well i'm all the way to wisconsin wait i thought you moved to texas like no i don't know where you got that from and that's where it all began this investigation of all the 
dust and clone army that I, apparently I've been hiding. Mm -hmm. um, it's been weird. However, it's just random furries, and I still don't know who the hell they are to this day. Hmm. But as soon as one of them messaged me, thinking I was another clone, so it must be like this, this, this organization's like, oh yeah, are you a Tony Clifton? Oh yeah, I am totally a Tony Clifton. I'm such a fan. I'm Where? such a fan of all the Cliftons. Uh huh. Or like, or like an Elvis Presley. Yeah. Um, he was the anti. In case anybody doesn't know who Tony Clifton is, Tony Clifton was the anti. Uh, El Elvis, Elvis Presley, Presley uh, created by Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman, uh, portrayed mostly by Andy Kaufman, uh, but there's still people that portray Tony Clifton to this day. And it's it's also in it's also an organization of who gets to do it at what point. Yeah, they have it. It's organized. And they play. They literally play professional gigs in yeah. Vegas and other uh, moderately s larger venues. Mini, mini venues, I'll say. Right. Uh, parlors and stuff like that, restaurants, places where you can have live entertainment. And I'm sure a lot of these go through um, demos of like, how good is your Tony Clifton? They probably I'm have sure a, they have auditions secretly. They probably have a... Um, they're probably protected by a uh, what do you call it? a union. I was gonna say there there probably is a, a Tony Clifton union. Probably. Just because they know, oh hey, um, um, your sideburns can only be so long. Yep. And uh, there's those, standards that they have to uphold. Uh, those with seniority can actually grow their sideburns. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, you have to smoke and drink while you're singing. Yeah. It's an absolute requirement. Uh, you, you you can't use a fake cigarette. You must actually use a cigarette. You must be smoking. Even if the place is non-smoking... you you got to smoke. You have to smoke. Yeah. I, I just... I mean, we're making this shit up, but... The only thing I'm not making up is that there really are real Tony Clifton's. If and nobody's seen Man on the Moon, see it. Yep. Learn it. Live it. Um... Yeah, there is th there is an organization of Tony Clifton's that are well organized, a well oiled machine, mm -hmm. much like Santa Claus's of like who gets to do what. The same with um, Elvis Presley in, in in impersonations. I'm sure it's the same with the founding fathers. Whether if you're Abraham Lincoln or um, Benjamin Franklin lookalikes or whatever. Um, I'm sure there is an actual organized, uh, well-oiled group, an organization that keeps this running to make sure that they're on point all the time because uh, I don't think many people would accept subpar Tony Clifton's. Oh, no. Um, I think that'd be a travesty. The, uh, the, the cat would certainly uh, hiss. I, I hold him in high regard only because he's such a... It's hard to describe if you've never seen him. It's unlike anything you've ever seen. He's he's a really bad singer. Yeah. He's an insult comic. Yeah. Oh yeah. And he. Uh, Do you think he actually pioneered that? He definitely was one of the earlier ones, if not pioneered. The insult. Uh, uh, the insult comic. I mean, literally, just would go around and just make fun of people. Make fun of people in the audience. Pour drinks on people's heads. Uh, the moment that like you sneeze and fart at the same time, they're gonna call you something for the entire show. And while you're embarrassed as, as hell, but if that was a recorded show, you were you have reached a, a different plane of existence that you were the person that got yelled by Tony Clifton <sighs> through the physical medium of Andy Kaufman. Yep. To think that you were a human prop. I mean, he 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 dedicated himself so strongly to that character that he actually, and the episode never aired, but he actually struck a deal with the station, 
or the production company, uh, that Tony Clifton would appear on one episode of Taxi. Really? And they, he said, you either allow him to be on one episode or I'm not playing this character anymore. Oh, wait. Uh, Latka. Latka, really? Yeah. So what did they do? So he came. He showed up as Tony Clifton, Andy Kaufman. Nobody recognized him. He showed mm -hmm. up with two prostitutes on either side of him. Okay, all right. And uh, just wasted the production company's time the whole day. And they were like, we can't work with this guy. He's terrible. Was this was this in 1983 when the show was a, in on its, its prime? In its prime, he wanted to ruin the show. That's right, because he absolutely hated Latka. He, he hated loved Latka. Latka until someone got it. What once it hit mainstream uh, reception and people loved it, he hated it. He stopped. He didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah, because he felt like he was a performing monkey now. Right. If he's not behind the joke and everyone else isn't in on it it's funny to him he was really a, kind of a, a mad scientist genius of comedy to put it in, in best terms simplest oh, yeah. terms it's just he didn't want people to be in on a joke he wanted to be he, it wanted it, he wanted it for himself uh, so yeah Tony Clifton showed up, drank, smoked, danced on top of the ta one of the taxi props, <laughs> sang a song about taxis, <laughs> and uh, oh wow, really? They literally sat there like we can't use any of this. This is horrible. Finally, they got somebody to escort him off the uh, off the set. Off the set. I wonder if that was the reason why they killed off the show. Because I'm Eventually. sure there was got to be a reason why, Eventually. because that show was going was on from '77 to '83, yeah. Which, when you really think about it, is <clears throat> back then the disco '70s going into the digital '80s, and you know what? It was very '70s in feel. Yeah, it was still very funny. I mean, it's my favorite takes, show. It's Danny DeVito. It's my favorite show. It's Danny DeVito. In fact, shortest, I'm shortest cast member on that show. Yeah. Yet had the biggest personality, loudest person on there. Would get in anybody's face, would stand on a chair just so we could look you in the eye. Yeah. And yell at you because of something that happened. Louis de Palmer. Yep. <laughs> at your service. What do you mean? What do you mean you don't want to go out with with this stud? <laughs> yeah, that show is phenomenal. Sadly, they killed off uh, Latka. Oh, oh, well. I wonder what series that was, because that had to be the very end. Yeah, close to it. Because I think when you get rid of Latka, I think that's when, you know, which Latka didn't make the show. No, he wasn't even on the first season. No, actually, yeah. And he got introduced like four or five years into it. Actually, no. Well, really, the show has only been on for six years. But I think the first season he wasn't even on. No, he was definitely not on the first season. Who is Loco? No, that's not Loco. Do 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 It's an iconic theme. Good night, Mr. Walters. How are we doing on time? We're definitely past the hour mark. Oh, I think we should probably end it because it's almost 9 o'clock and you have to be yeah. up early. Well, that and I kind of want to eat something. No, so you should eat something. You only made... What? No, that can't be. Spit it out. 22 episodes total? What? 
of taxi. Yeah, that can't be. That doesn't feel right. No, it's not. 22 episodes the first season. 24. This is a popular show. Yeah. There was 20, 22 to 24 episodes per season. It was only on for five seasons. Five years? Yep. So that was 78 to 83. 82, actually. So 82, so 77 to 82. Yeah. Wow. And you know what? A lot of those actors got their big start from that show, too. A lot of them. Uh, Danny DeVito definitely got more popularized by that show. Latka, or Andy Kaufman, became a bit more known because of it. Uh, you got Christopher Lloyd. Really, if you really think about it, um, became perfect for Reverend Jim, which, which he'd eventually go into, uh, the Back to the Future series. And did you know who was an uncredited extra in one of the episodes of Taxi that was his very first cinematographer, uh, his first uh, entry into the world of film? Who's that? Tom Hanks. I believe that. Uh, he was an uncredited extra. That was the very first time he had ever been behind any big camera, whether it was a TV show or a movie, uh, which uh, his his first role ever was being a high Harvard college student eating pot brownies and looking at a lava lamp. Hmm. Yeah, and it is totally Tom Hanks. So somewhere between the seventh and eighth episode, possibly before then, uh, is when they introduced Laka. So he was introduced in the first ep season. first season, but yeah. not the first. Uh, okay. Not the first episode. They probably they needed a mechanic, and they wanted a foreigner as yeah. a mechanic from a from a country that no one else really knows. He literally made up his own language, which was funny. Genius. Yeah. He was genius. And the lady that played opposite him was, was really funny, too. Who? Uh, the little, uh, she had a little tiny voice. As soon as you see her face, you'll recognize her. What is this, a female? Uh, part two, scenes from a, a marriage. Do you remember her? She had, like, real frizzy, curly hair. A very tiny voice. Oh, her? okay. Do you remember her? Maybe. Latka and Simka. Oh, Simka, yeah. Yeah. She was funny. She's still around. That actress is still around. Really? Uh, Andy Kaufman died in 83 or 84 from cancer. Not long after yep. Taxi. Really? Yep. yep. I thought he died in the uh, late eighties to early nineties. No, early eighties. Really, yeah. cancer really took him out. It took him. He probably had it for a long time and didn't know it. That's shocking. Yeah. I didn't realize he was he was dead that soon. Yep. Wow. He left. He definitely left his mark, though. I'll say that for him for sure. You know, an, another actor that was battling cancer uh, was the guy um, who played. The Black Panther, yeah, um, who passed away last August. The black guy. Yeah, um, I forget his name. I can think of his name, but it's not really coming to mind. I can see his face. I can't think. I don't. I didn't know his name. But the he was battling colon cancer, stage four colon cancer, for like. What, five five years mm. and during that time he was making films as well yeah why can't I think of his name and I can picture his name but I can't think of it um Chad Chadwick Chadwick uh, his first name was Chadwick it was Chadwick something oh. who played the Black Panther
Chadwick Bo- Boseman. Boseman, there we go. And uh, his death was a total surprise to me until they say, well, he was battling stage 4 colon cancer, which must have been incredibly aggressive because my grandfather had stage 3 colon cancer, and he made it out. Apparently he filmed Black Panther 2. Well, wait, is that a film that came out or no? No, it's coming out next year. Really? Look at the bottom here. It says right there, upcoming movie, Black Panther 2. No way. Yeah. So the, so he so he must have knew that this thing was getting too aggressive. And I guess maybe in his spare time he said, Hey, let's make another movie. Let's actually record all the roles you want me to do while I'm still alive. Yeah. And if I'm gone, at least you, you still have a chance to make the movie without me, but with me in it. Do you know the only other actor that I've known that did that was Bruce Lee's son. Brandon really? Lee. Brandon Lee, who did The Crow. And he just said, hey, uh, I may not be around for very long. Why don't you just make... Why don't you record some things of me doing something and make it into a movie at some point? Yeah. That's wild. I didn't realize that he had enough material um, done before his passing to make a second movie. He's literally in the cast for the movie. And it's it's it, it's not even a deep fake. You know how they did one for Grand Admiral Tarkin? Yes. Uh, where they... It, 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 it was convincing, it was but it convincing. looked... It looked kind of weird, but it was convincing. Yeah. Um, you had uh, a, a young Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia in... Rogue One yes. at the very end. Yep. Who obviously wasn't her, wasn't actually Carrie Fisher, because ob- obviously she's older. But they ended up actually digitally, digitally recreating her likeness. Yes. On another actor. It looked good. It looked it looked pretty good. Yeah. It was strange, kind of like Grand Admiral Tarkin. But it looked all right, actually. This time, this is not a deep fake. This is an actual actor, which is going to be weird because we expect people to be brought back from the dead with a face that is not totally their face, but is their face, but not totally their their face. This is going to be actual Chadwick Boseman. Knowing that he's been passed on for about a year, this is going to be him, actually. That's that's wild and fun at the same time. Yeah. I think I think we we've discussed quite a lot right now. Sure. And and definitely would like to try to get this up tonight as well, just to actually finally have an episode posted on the date. So But um Yeah, it's been fun. Yep. All right, a little, a little bit more different uh, than your usual subjects, but uh, figure it was uh, fun and interesting as well. So this has been another episode of the Zooming Who's podcast, and once again, I'm your host, Dustin Husky. I'm Kurt Ansarpus. And we'll catch you next time.